Welcome to another classic YouTube rabbit hole. I'm your host, and today I'll be guiding you through this procrastination session by teaching you nine different things in DaVinci Resolve that'll hopefully help you get back to that edit you're actively avoiding. If you stick around to the end, there's no reward. You've just wasted more time. If you've ever edited a film with an interview, you know the pain of listening through hours of footage over and over and over again. Luckily, DaVinci Resolve 18 and after has a feature to transcribe your interviews into text. So you can go through, search for a theme, find all the references in your interview where that theme's mentioned, and insert them into a new timeline. Now you're left with a timeline that only has quotes about that theme. To give you a rundown, Q goes backwards, E goes forwards, and W stops. Then when I hold shift, W makes a cut, and then Q and E move that clip up or down. What this allows me to do is to rifle through my timeline and make selects by just cutting and bumping the clips up onto the next timeline. When combined with the next tip, it's actually drastically improved the speed at which I can organize my footage. I mapped all of the different clip colors to the numbers on my keyboard. That way when I'm going through and pulling selects with those shortcuts I mentioned in the past tip, I can immediately categorize them along the way. Whether they're scenics, dialogue shots, details, action shots, you can assign them to a color, bump up all your clips, color code them along the way, select all clips with color, and now you have all of the clips that relate to that specific theme or whatever categorization you chose. I know I'm not supposed to have favorites, but this is by far my favorite tip of this whole video. Let's say you're a sick motion graphics designer like I am, and you just made this dope title that you want to use all throughout your documentary. Drag it into your bins. Rename it to whatever you want to call it, and now anywhere in the timeline, if you want to reuse that graphic for a different character, you just drag it in. It automatically makes a copy of it, so you're not affecting the original one, and you can change anything you want about it, but I don't think you could really make this title better, so I don't know what you'd want to change about it. You might shoot beautiful stuff for your documentary, but you might come across a moment where you're dealing with a three kilobyte JPEG from 20 years ago that you somehow have to make look decent in your film. Cue the adjustment layer and DaVinci Resolve's film look creator. Drag an adjustment layer above your old archival clip, drag on this film creator, set it to vintage, and bada boom, bada bing. Instead of shit, it now looks shit, but in a cool way. We want that cool shit look. If you want to reuse this look on various photos and other spots in your documentary similar to the text, drag it back into your bins, rename it, and now you have this layer you can drag and drop over literally anything in your film and it will make it look old timey and cool. Honestly, I never really used markers before. DaVinci Resolve has this index page that actually lists out all of your markers in your timeline. And the most important part is it has the text right there that you added into the marker. Now when you add markers, you can immediately navigate to different parts of your edit based on whatever text you entered in there. So for example, I might use this to mark different parts of the edit that are not done or add notes for future me when I come back and edit with various ideas. Big projects are often shot on many different cameras in many different locations and under different conditions. Making sense of all of this in the color grade and trying to get all these cameras to match can sometimes be a bit of a nightmare. To remedy this, DaVinci Resolve actually has a grouping feature that allows you to select multiple clips and group them together based on whatever you see fit. This is really handy for any time you want to use camera specific LUTs or one of my favorite uses of this is for noise reduction. I'll go through and find any clip that I think requires noise reduction, group them together, and in the group pre-clip, I'll throw a noise reduction node in there. This is helpful because noise reduction is a crazy intensive process that bogs down your whole machine. So rather than having to throw it on each individual clip, you just have to throw it in this one group tab 
and all of a sudden you have a toggle switch to flick it on and off for all of your clips that require noise reduction. So you can switch it off while you're editing and flick it back on when you want to go to render. Head to the Fairlight tab and go up to Batch Fade Settings. Here you can adjust the length of time it takes for the fade in, cross fade, and fade out. If you're trying to clean up dialogue from an interview to make sure you don't have any cracks or pops, you might want to use something around two or three frames so that you're not cutting off any words. If you want to apply these fades to something like sound effects so that you have nice gradual transitions, then you might want to set it to something slower, maybe around 24 frames, so that it takes a second to come in and ease out. Once you've dialed in all your settings, head back to your timeline, select all the clips that you want to apply the fade to, and then hit Apply Batch Fades. As you can see, it's added all of those fades in for us, so we no longer have to do this by hand, saving us tons of time in the edit. Power bins. Power bins. If you enjoy collecting and hoarding media on hard drives that are collecting dust, then power bins are for you. Power bins are just like normal bins in your DaVinci project. The only difference is that you can access them from any project you open. So you can have a massive asset library, things like that cool hipster film overlay that you want to use on every project like I do. Or let's say you have a huge music library and you don't feel like dealing with scrolling through Artlist or Musicbed, you can just pull them up within DaVinci Resolve, quickly scrub through, drag and drop, and you're off to the races. Well, that's all for me, but if you're enjoying being stuck in this rabbit hole and you want to continue procrastinating, I have a whole bunch of videos that you can check out. Feel free to click them and uh, enjoy avoiding your edit. Later.